thank you very much yeah, for inviting me uh, to this conference to give a talk. In fact, uh, it will be a second talk in a row. So Dana Bramwich uh, yesterday gave the first talk about the same project and uh, I'll try to give some more details probably. And even uh, my, most of the talk will be even concerned with Hironaka and then I'll uh, explain how logarithmic geometry actually uh, catches and improves things and and so on. Also, maybe I'll mention Dan started his previous talk with uh, uh, and you that uh, Sasha Kuznetsov was detained in Moscow, so he was released now, but he'll face a trial. Fortune, hopefully for a fine, but he'll be trialed now in February 3rd, so tomorrow. But at least he is at home now. Okay, so yeah. Uh, and hope for good. Okay, let's start uh, uh, this talk. So uh, the title is Logarithmic Resolution of Singularities. It's a joint project with uh, Dan and with Yarek Vlodarchik. Uh, our main goal uh, or second main goal was a resolution of singularities of morphisms uh, as Dan formulated, but it turned out that uh, for morphisms, natural uh, smoothness property is logarithmic smoothness. So you should uh, somehow extend your context where you walk. So it's also a project about resolution of log variety. Even just for varieties, uh, these provide something new and uh, stronger results and uh, logarithmic geometry is everywhere. Here. And one of my goals is sort of to advertise logarithmic geometry. Uh, references for this talk. Okay, there are three. Uh, the first paper in 17 uh, was uh, on principalization of ideals or resolution of logarithmic varieties. So we wanted just to test the grounds in the simplest case, absolute case, but with logarithmic structure. And uh, it's already accepted for publication. Uh, when in 20, we proceeded and uh, actually we showed that the same algorithm applies to uh, uh, right, uh, to morphisms, relative resolution. So it was sort of even better than we expected. We hope that maybe uh, it will need some adjustments. It turned out that more or less the same algorithm. I, uh, I'll comment a bit uh, uh, in the sequel. And third, uh, it was an unexpected uh, result. We discovered, uh, as Dan already explained, that actually one has to use text. Now approach and uh, stacks even extended the context even more. It allowed us to use weighted blowings up and we managed to do a uh, sort of resolution by weighted blowings up. I'll mention it a bit during our talk. It's a side issue for us. So it, it will not be in the focus, but okay. A couple of comments will be also about this. Uh, it's uh, in the paper from 19, pre also so far preprint. Good. Uh, now, uh, let me comment a bit about classical resolution, just to recall yeah, uh, how it went, uh, or just general. Uh, so for simplicity, we'll always work with varieties over here, K. Uh, K must be of characteristic zero, otherwise most of what uh, is going to be done cannot be done. And uh, it's a great question if uh, resolution exists or how one can uh, do it in dimension more than three. Uh, but for characteristic zero, okay, uh, I'm going to describe uh, what is known. And uh, in fact, uh, the same applies also to analytic spaces. If you wish, you can uh, think that you are in an analytic situation. All what I'm going to tell translates uh, more or less verbatim into analytic. Uh, now, resolution of singularities uh, aims to associate to an integral variety Z a modification that is proper operational morphism. Uh, which uh, has a smooth uh, source. So it covers uh, Z by something smooth in a sort of minimal possible way. Yeah, cover which is proper but variational, generically isomorphic. Uh, the first resolution in all dimensions uh, was done by Hironaka in 64. It's uh, his famous Fields Medal book. He proved the resolution exists uh, by way non constructive proof, just existential and very complex. And then in 70s, 
uh, people started to digest. First of all, Hironaka himself uh, and also Jiro contributed a lot. They digested this proof. It took a lot of time to simplify it and uh, understand what are uh, main parts uh, to get the naked uh, essence of the algorithm. And in particular, we discovered maximal contact, which we'll discuss uh, today later. Uh, and then next advance was in 80s, 90s by Bill Mayor and Beerstorm with Milman. Uh, they proved that actually there is algorithmic and even canonical resolution, which depends only on isomorphism class. It's compatible with any automorphism of a variety. Uh, it was first uh, measure uh, advance after that. And then in 2005, Yarek uh, proved that actually these algorithms are uh, smooth functorial. They're compatible with any uh, smooth uh, morphism uh, um, Z prime. Uh, with uh, any Z prime. Okay. Uh, any Z prime, which is. Uh, Okay, uh, <clears throat> so it seems that I'm penless. Uh, uh, any smooth morphism from Z prime to Z, you get compatible uh, resolutions. Resolution of Z prime is pull back of resolution of uh, Z. Uh, now this uh, has double advantage. It simplifies the argument because to prove that something is canonical is often easier. Uh, and also it has strong applications, equivalent resolution and so on. Okay. Uh, now relative and uh, uh, logarithmic resolution. So the new stuff. Uh, in fact, it started only in 17. Uh, so classical algorithm, uh, we discovered that classical algorithm has a logarithmic analog, which takes a Log, uh, which uh, uh, takes any log variety, which is generically log smooth, and modifies it so that the new log variety is logarithmically smooth. A drawback, which Dan already mentioned, is that actually this happens in category of stacks. At some price, one, one can then remove stacky structure. Uh, the new algorithm is uh, pantorial in the strongest sense, in the sense of log smooth. Uh, morphisms is naturally we extend our category. We have another notion of smoothness, so everything should be compatible with log smooth morphisms. It's a very natural uh, generalization. Now, getting off the logarithmic stru the stacky structure uh, is only uh, compatible with smooth morphisms. So you lose this stronger functionality is lost if you want to return to the world of only log variety. Uh, okay, and then actually our next step was to discover that the same logarithmic resolution algorithm applies to any morphism of log schemes, X to B. Again, generically log, uh, log smooth morphism. Uh, so to any such morphism, uh, the algorithm associates a modification of X, X res, so what X res over uh, B is logarithmically smooth, yeah? So instead of taking B spec of the field in uh, ATW17, now we allow a general base. Uh, the novelty is that uh, it may fail. It does not work always. But the good news uh, is that, first of all, if the base is one dimensional, as in the case of semi-stable reduction, or zero dimensional, as in the absolute case, when it works always. And if the base is high dimensional, actually this failure only indicates that you must modify your base first. So the new ingredient in the work of uh, 20 was that there exists a modification of the base such that after the modification, we pull back the morphism F to F prime from X prime to B prime. And this morphism already uh, has a resolution X prime res. Uh, moreover, uh, it's essentially independent of modification of the base. If you take modification which is large enough, 
any phase modification uh, will also produce a, a base change which has a resolution and it's uh, actually pulled back of uh, the resolution of a prime. So uh, uh, we have two uh, sort of two uh, coordinates. We want to modify B and X. For B, we just say take large enough resolution. And for X, we have something very canonical and algorithmic. So it's sort of uh, relative uh, functionality. It's uh, functionality which depends on morphisms. And uh, the base must be taken large enough. Similarly to the flattening problem, any morphism can be done flat by base change and strict transform, but in a non canonical way. So, the same happens here. Uh, there is no minimal such base change in general. So, we do not hope that uh, there is perfect control on base change in general, but in case of proper uh, morphism, proper X to B, uh, it seems that H can be chosen at least canonically, maybe not minimal, but at least canonically, and it's working for it. Yeah, questions? Uh, okay, so uh, this is more or less uh, repeats what uh, Dan formulated these details, yeah. And uh, uh, my goal for today will be uh, to discuss classical resolution and then to show what are the adjustments in ATW17. In the simplest case where log structures appears. So the case of uh, morphisms is very similar, just uh, more technical. Uh, up to the new ingredient about existence of uh, modification, which is uh, something of another sort. It's, it's essential and uh, it's done by, by the technique, uh, but it, I think it's less interesting. Okay, uh, good. Uh, now plan. So we'll start with classical resolution. Then I'll discuss a bit log geometry. And then uh, I'll show how logarithmic algorithm works, logarithmic varieties, yeah, in absolute degree. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's start uh, with classical. So classical resolution, uh, in fact, all methods, uh, by classical, I mean all methods from Hironaka to Vladarshi, for say so maybe to a book of Kolar, uh, everything before 17 uh, was more or less the same algorithm which grew of the original Hironaka's work. After this uh, coining uh, the notion of maximal contact, all algorithms were more or less the same with small combinatorial uh, differences. Uh, but uh, proofs uh, modified and also properties uh, this, it took time to understand that this algorithm uh, possesses more and more properties, like the fact discovered by Vodarchik, smooth functionality. So, uh, but algorithm is more or less the same, and uh, it goes by embedded resolution. One uh, takes X, uh, which one wants to resolve, and embeds it into a manifold. By a manifold, I always mean smooth variety throughout these talks. And from this point, this is always possible locally. And uh, because we construct, we want to construct functorial resolution, so canonical, it's enough to do it locally and uh, to check locally that it is functorial and then globalization is automatic. Uh, uh, so uh, locally, everything can be embedded, embedded into smooth. And then uh, one works with pair M and X embedded into M. One wants to modify smooth guys so that it stays smooth. And in addition, the transform of X, that is uh, strict transform, for example, or something else we'll discuss, uh, becomes uh, uh, smooth. Uh, now, uh, functorial embedded resolution implies functorial non-embedded uh, because embedding is essentially unique. Uh, it locally is uh, embedding with minimal dimension is uh, unique. Uh, so this functoriality with respect to Italian morphisms is very useful. It implies that uh, everything is uh, essentially independent of the embedding. So from now on, we talk only about embedded resolution. So this is first reduction from non-embedded to embedded. Okay, now what are the choices of classical resolution? So uh, people are so used to use them with their sort of axioms, but in fact, these are choices and I want to stress. So first of all, class of modifications. 
So the algorithm actually works as follows. One blows up submanifold. One takes M, takes submanifold V, blows it up. Uh, so iteratively improves singularity by blowing up manifold along smooth submanifold. In such case, the ambient manifold stays smooth all the time during the process. I'll define them as MI blown up along VI produces MI plus one, the next one. Uh, transforms. Uh, also, one takes X and pull back uh, from MI to MI plus one. Now, as I uh, said, actually, we don't want to take the full pre image. We want to take strict transform or something like that. Strict transform is difficult to describe concretely. So in algorithm, one takes something in between. One takes so-called weak transform or principal transform. One takes the pullback, full pullback, and removes few copies of exceptional divisor. And uh, actually, this is the transform we'll use all the way. Around, I'll say about the multiplicity of exceptional, I uh, will talk later. Uh, choice of the centers. How the algorithm decides what is the center to blow up. So uh, there is a complicated invariant we'll discuss later. Maybe not so complicated, but still uh, involved. Uh, but uh, its primary invariant is very simple. It's just order of ideal. Uh, we'll have a slide in few slides uh, after this uh, to describe it in detail, but now just uh, uh, sort of multiplicity of ideal order. Uh, in addition, it turns out that the algorithm uh, cannot use only the other. It will run into endless loops and we'll have an example in a bit. And because of this, the algorithm must use history. And the history is encoded in uh, iterated exceptional divisors. So we add, we, call it, we gain exceptional divisor throughout the process. And it will be always three simple normal processing divisor. Number of components of exceptional divisor at our point is uh, denoted S of X. It's another primary invariant of uh, the resolution. It's not so informative. It's not about singularity. It's about history. And uh, finally, induction. Uh, the algorithm goes by induction on dimension. We start with M. We embed our problem with M. And we manage to reduce it to submanifold in M and then submanifold in submanifold and so on. Uh, to reduce the problem to so-called maximal convex uh, hypersurf. This gives us induction on dimension. So actual invariant will be as follows. D, uh, T1 is the order on M. S1 is the number of exceptional convex. And then D2 is the order on maximal convex. S2, number of exceptional where, and so on. This lexicographic order. So this is actually more or less the full invariant. Sn is always zero, so one can ignore. Uh, questions. Uh, do, if you have any questions, please ask uh, because, uh, yeah. Uh, especially in uh, Zoom lectures, I cannot see many faces. So uh, it's your task, uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> I'll be in uh, some contact with auditor. Uh, okay. And now about history and the dream algorithm. So, classical algorithm uh, has a subtle inductive structure. And it has to encode history uh, because there is no, uh, no history algorithm. And here is an example by Yarek Vodarch. Uh, let's take uh, x squared equal uh, y z t, a free fold in uh, a4. Uh, uh, any Fandorial guy, uh, it has uh, s free uh, symmetry by permuting y z t. Uh, the only smooth. Uh, subscheme in uh, this uh, guy, uh, which can be blown up in the singular locus of this guy, which can be blown up, is uh, the point. Singular locus is the union of three axes, and uh, uh, only the origin is a smooth, that is, uh, locus which we are allowed to blow up as free equivalent guy. So the only thing which Pantorial guy can blow up here is to blow up the origin. When we do it, uh, we get something. Uh, uh, we get something here. Oops, really, no functioning. 
I'm good. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so when we when we do this, uh, it's easy to see that the new function will be twice exceptional divisor. Where, uh, for example, on y uh, char, y prime square times the function which is the same. So after removing two copies of exceptional divisor, we are stuck with the same guy. So if we do not use any history, we must blow up again the origin and again and again, and will, this will never end. And uh, a similar but even easier example is with umbrella. Uh, pinch point, again, if you blow up pinch point, you get again pinch point. So visibly worst point here is pinch point, the origin, and it preserves. So uh, a classical algorithm has, after the choice of uh, usual blow ups as the only modifications, we must use history. But if we use other modifications, for example, weighted blow ups, as we did with uh, Dan and uh, Yarek in uh, 19, when one can construct a dream algorithm which just computes, uh, associates uh, some uh, invariant to a singularity, takes the maximal locus of this invariant, blows it up, and the invariant drops, but at cost of using weighted blow up. So in classical situation, we have no choice. We must use uh, the boundary and the history. Okay, good. Uh, now, what uh, is the idea of introducing the boundary? I think uh, it was the motivation idea for Corona. I guess I, I, I never asked it, probably. So the point is that once we blow up M and we get M, M prime, yeah, like uh, here, for example, in this, uh, in this, in this situation, uh, on M prime, we have some special coordinates. This E exceptional divisor and its coordinate were God given. Yeah, so we, we have one coordinate which is different from all the rest, if we remember the history. And the idea is to keep this information. And the easiest way to keep it is to keep uh, exceptional divisor as part of our data. And moreover, we'll only use coordinate systems which include one of coordinates uh, is a coordinate of exception. So inductively for a sequence, we'll just uh, accumulate exceptional divisor. We'll uh, uh, define the new guy as premature of old guy and the exception of the last blow up. We call it accumulated boundary of M. We always work with coordinates uh, T1, Tn. So with the center, the new center is described as uh, uh, linear subspace with respect to this T1, Tn locally. And uh, the exception is given by vanishing of the last few coordinates, last R coordinates. Uh, in such way, we actually get that EI is simple normal crossing. And after such blow up, the new exception is also a simple normal crossing. So not only manifold stays manifold, the boundary stays boundary. Yeah, Simple normal crossing sim stays simple normal crossing. If we would take some smooth centers which are touching the boundary, we would destroy it. So we restrict only to some permissible. Uh, good, and uh, we call the boundary coordinates exceptional or monomial. And uh, sometimes it's even good to denote them separately to remember that they play different role in the algorithm. In Hironaka, it's very easy to compute, to confuse, but uh, separation of these two types of variables, I'll return to this more and more during this talk. Okay, role of the boundary, good news. First of all, using canonical mon monomial coordinates, uh, we have less choices. So in principle, in, uh, it's good. We want to construct something canonical. So less choices, uh, the better. Uh, and also it helps us to avoid loops, as uh, I explained. Uh, moreover, boundary can accumulate parts of ideal. Uh, it will be, be important or clear why it's so convenient from the next uh, slide, but in fact, this splitting off boundary components on the level of ideals just means that we uh, factor our ideal to product of some monomial part, some uh, product of few monomials, and something which is 
normally. Bad news, which are just another side of the same coin. First of all, we must respect this E. It uh, not, not only helps us, we must also respect it. It makes our life uh, heavier. We must choose our centers more carefully. Yeah, the same thing, but it also causes us to suffer. As you'll see. And yeah, less possibilities for coordinates and yeah. Okay, uh, remark. Uh, many technical complications of classical algorithms are, as I said, because of bad separation of regular and exceptional coordinates. A phenomenon which will completely disappear in logarithmic situation. Okay, good. And now a couple of works about transplization. So first reduction of resolution of singularities problem was to embed one. Embed your variety into something smooth and work with smooth. The next stage is replace your embedded guy X by ideal of X and work only with ideal. Uh, so uh, let I be the ideal which defines X inside N. And then we would like to solve the following principalization problem. Find a sequence of blow ups of manifolds uh, with, uh, with boundary, yeah, with ME and so on and so on, such that the pullback of I to MN is invertible and monomial. So it's, ju uh, it's just a divisor supporter to an EN. Now, okay, nice problem. What is the relation to the old one? Uh, and here is the magic. It turns out that if you find such a sequence, when the last non-empty strict transform of X, assume that it happens on some stage L, XL, actually equals to VL, it equals to the center. Uh, I'll not explain it now, but if you think two minutes is enough to, to, to understand why, uh, why it happened. So it's, I don't have any conceptual explanation, it's sort of very simple magic. It happens and it's uh, uh, extremely important. And not only, so it implies that this XL is automatically smooth and also transversal to EL. We, we, we even, we did not ask this transversality. It's a bonus, it comes for free. Uh, so uh, principalization implies resolution because XL to X is resolution of singularity. And moreover, it results also the boundary. So in fact, we result a logarithmic scheme, and not a scheme. It's, it gives us some smell of log geometry happening some, somewhere here implicitly. A great profit is that working with ideals yields a lot of flexibility. It's much more flexible object. Yeah, like modules and uh, uh, algebras, you know, sometimes it's much better to work with modules. Similarly here, uh, we can work with non-radical uh, ideals, we can do things, it improves our possibilities also. And uh, we are going now to enjoy it. So from now on, we talk only about principalization of ideal on a manifold, yeah? Uh, okay, order reduction. Uh, so as I told, main invariant of the algorithm is just order of the pure part of I, why? Because my goal is to, uh, to, to get I purely monomial. So my enemy is pure part, the purely non-monomial part. So I would like to reduce the order of purely non-monomial uh, part to zero. Once it is zero, I pure equals to one. Now, order of ideal, order of J is minimal order of elements of J. And uh, well, order, you, you know, <laughs> I just, just give two examples. Uh, everybody knows uh, order of X square minus Y Z square because order of this is two here and order of uh, x5 plus y, uh, y yeah, order of this guy is five because here we have five and all the rest is of order five. Uh, order is a very stupid invariant. Uh, so, uh, oh, okay, well, it will be a bit later. Uh, now, in addition, we will work with marked ideals which are uh, implicitly sort of weight ideal. I and D, where D will be some number uh, called the marking weight or whatever. Uh, and we will only, given ID, we only uh, blow up center, which lies in the uh, locus ID singular. By definition, this is the set of all points of M where the order is at least D. So if we do such a thing, we are guaranteed 
that the pullback will be divisible by this power of exception. So if we blow up such a center, we can divide by this power of exception. So our transform each time will be pulled back and subtract this power of exception. Okay. Uh, now we'll play with this D in the sequel a bit. So uh, uh, it's a choice. Uh, example, uh, if we take our example uh, or Yarek's example I described earlier, x square minus y z t with uh, D equal to blow up the origin. Then after subtracting twice the exception, we get the same the same equation as we have seen. Well, other reduction finds a sequence of ID admissible blow ups so that I n D has empty singular locus. That is, we transform I n only by reducing these powers of exception. And in the end, the other drops below D. I claim that this other reduction of ideal is stronger than principalization. Just take D equal one, it gives you principalization. For inductive reasons, it will be convenient for us to play this D, not only D equal one, with different D. Uh, yeah, questions? Okay, uh, so let's go. Uh, further remark. Uh, so there is one case which is uh, the most natural one. And uh, to take D just equals to the order of uh, pure part. We want to reduce pure part. We want to reduce its order. So just take D equal to this. Uh, this is indeed the, the main case. And the, the rest follows from this combinatorial power, more or less combinatorial. But uh, because our algorithm is an induction, induction on maximal contacts, and after restricting to maximal contact, uh, order can jump, we have to work with general D. So it's a punishment for using induction. Okay. Uh, good. And now, um, maximal contact. So this uh, great discovery of uh, zero. Uh, uh, miracle which actually makes induction on dimension possible is that uh, in the maximal order case, yeah, in the case when D equals to the order of P of R, uh, order reduction of ID is equivalent to order reduction of some ideal called coefficient ideal restricted to some hypersurface called maximal contact hypersurface. And uh, uh, with some other D, in this case, uh, it will be D factor. Uh, so in fact, any blow up sequence which reduces order of I can be seen already on H. It will, its first center lies on H. Next center lies on strict transform on H and so on. So it's important only to look what's going on with this H and its strict transform. So if we have by induction assumption and solution for principalization of this guy, uh, then we can resolve I. So this gives us induction on dimension in the maximal order case. And now uh, example, the main example. In fact, example, which was known uh, maybe before here on a card, Yanker definitely do. Uh, so uh, assume that I is given by one, uh, generated by one element. Assume we can choose coordinates. In fact, it's no assumption. One always can choose them. Uh, uh, so that uh, uh, this element becomes t to the d plus sum of coefficients a i t to i d minus i uh, with a i depending on the rest of coordinates. And uh, uh, h is uh, uh, vanishing locus of t in such case. And the coefficient ideal in such case is the ideal generated by coefficients this correct weight. Uh, in, in, in fact, uh, the weight of AI is one over I, but to make, to make everything uh, integral, we must also multiply by factorial, d factor. Well, uh, now question, why this works? So what is the idea of this? Uh, so few things. First of all, coefficient ideal is a way to restrict our I on 2H. If we just restrict ideal, we just take AD 
in the restricted to H. It's stupid. We lose information. We def this definitely cannot work. But if we uh, restrict all coefficients, and each coefficient is restricted with uh, correct weight due to the missing power of T, then it turns out that actually all data is kept uh, or trans transferred to, to H. Uh, now, also, I would like to notice that uh, making A1 equal zero is possible in characteristic zero case. In fact, it's enough that D is invertible. So the main thing, which uh, very stupid but completely crucial, which fails in characteristic T, at least what you immediately see what fails, is that you cannot get a one equal uh, P in characteristic P, uh, a, a, a one equal zero in characteristic P. So no maximal contact in characteristic, no induction on dimension. No. Uh, okay, good. So uh, I showed you one main example. Uh, how the algorithm makes its induction on uh, dimension. Now, technical uh, realization. Uh, the technical is that, okay, here uh, I choose coordinates in a very special way. And I would like to give you a description which is coordinate free or choice free. Uh, the main tool here is ideal of derivations, D of i. So one takes uh, the ideal i. Uh, one takes uh, the ideal di generated by all elements by i and by all derivations, and the n of i will denote the uh, nth derivation. Uh, uh, note that order can be computed by derivation because taking derivation ideal, uh, we reduce order by one, we decrease it by one. And now uh, the description of all conceptual description of everything which goes in the algorithm is as follows. The order is the minimal D so a derivation contains a unit. So a D's derivation contains a unit. And uh, so uh, using derivations, we can uh, compute the main primary invariant. Uh, maximal contact. In fact, any hypersurface given by vanishing of T, where T is a regular element, regular element of order one in uh, derivation D minus one can be maximal contact. Uh, okay, in particular, this H is uh, smooth. Uh, okay, and this, uh, this is, this is important. Let us see. Uh, So this should be ignored, it's not, uh, okay. Uh, uh, coefficient uh, ideal CI. Also, uh, instead of taking uh, like here, uh, just union of all coefficients, uh, we can realize coefficients as by taking uh, derivations and uh, restricting derivations into H. So a generalization, natural generalization of this is to take direct, uh, to take sum of deriv derivative ideals with correct weights. Again, with the same weights as on the other slide. Uh, now, everything which I described is almost choice free except maximal contact. So the only serious difficulty in proving that all this works, improving canonicity is to show independence of choice of maximal contact. I will not discuss it here, but just to mention, Actually, this description leaves only one problem to, to deal with. Uh, okay, uh, now let's uh, discuss a bit. Logar we'll start to shift to logarithmic uh, stuff. So logarithmic derivation. Well, uh, model of logarithmic derivation in our situation is spent by uh, derivations uh, uh, with respect to usual coordinates. And MJ, DMJ, logarithmic derivations with respect to exceptional coordinates. So this is precisely the set of derivations which preserves the boundary. That is, it takes the ideal of the boundary to itself. Almost all, everything which can be done with derivations can be done with logarithmic derivations in a simple manner. But the only thing which fails is computation of the order. The problem is that in our definition of order, both logarithmic and non-logarithmic 
parameters contribute one. Because of this, we have to use here uh, derivations and not logarithm derivations. Okay, now two complications which are caused by this and uh, which have to be solved in Hironaka's uh, methods are as follows. First of all, E, the boundary does not have to be transverse, transversal to a maximal contour. No, no reason for, e, for, for this to happen and in general, it's not, uh, it's not true. In such case, we cannot restrict the boundary to H and we have to invent a trick to bypass it uh, probably I'll skip the strict uh, explanation of the trick, but one has to pay special care. Ah, okay, well, no, maybe, maybe this one I'll explain. So, uh, so uh, okay, let's, let's spend one more minute. So uh, we cannot re restrict the boundary to H uh, because it, it's not a simple normal process, but the new boundary which appears after blowing up H is automatically transversal to H. So the problem is only with the old boundary. And with old boundary, we can uh, try to get rid of it by walking each time only resolving I along the locals where multiplicity of all boundary is maximum. Let's, let's say equal to S. So practically we resolve not I, we resolve I plus uh, this power of, uh, uh, this uh, of ideal of this S multiplicity structure. Uh, this explains why our primary invariant is not just uh, D but D comma S. So we first of all we reduce my, uh, for the same D we reduce the number of components and then uh, the improvement. Okay, good. So uh, this complicated structure of invariant actually happens because of this complication. Uh, and second complication uh, uh, happens because uh, monomial uh, degree shows up. I'll skip this uh, slide. So let's go fast. But just to mention, there is one more complication and it's sort of solved similarly. One should take into account boundary very strongly. Okay. Uh, now, before I start the logarithmic part of the talk, uh, let's discuss what the boundary is. And this is sort of a philosophical question, but uh, uh, important. So uh, typically people think about boundary E as a divisor, as a subscheme. So I think that this is not correct in this situation. We never use it as a subscheme. What we really need we need, uh, and by the way, with functionality, when I have a map blow up M prime goes to M and E prime is a boundary, it might happen that E is empty and E prime is not empty. There is no map from E prime to E. So even on the level of functionality, it's not a map of subschemes. But what it is, uh, the boundary also can be described by shift of monomials. Uh, yeah, shift of. Uh, Functions which are units outside of the boundary. This shift m uh, sub uh, uh, m sub m determined by e. Yeah, units uh, outside of the boundary. So and for this shift we have a right functionality. The shift because the shift of uh, uh, monomials becomes larger and larger, and it helps us to decompose i, the product of monomials. And uh, the shift is precisely what we need from E. We never use any geometry of E. We use it uh, as a break. Uh, locally, the shift uh, is just uh, S power of N times units. Splitting is not canonical. Uh, so exceptional coordinates, in fact, are defined up to units, but it's not important for our own. Okay. Good, and now let's talk about logarithmic geometry. Uh, since Dan discussed it last time, I'll really go quickly through it because I also want to uh, finish this logarithmic algorithm. So logarithmic variety M X and M sub X consists of a variety and the sheaf of monoids. Uh, morphism is a compatible uh, pair of morphism of varieties and uh, monoids. Example which covers our needs is a sheaf 
uh, x and shift defined by a divisor d, all shift of functions which are inver invertible outside of d. Uh, many constructions extend log geometry. For example, there is a notion of differentials, logarithmic differentials. We are ge generated by usual differentials and elements delta m, which look like dm divided by m for any monomial. Uh, and uh, uh, there is a notion of log smooth morphisms, as in classical case, we are nicely described using relative differentials. So relative differentials are locally free of expected rank and so on. And uh, toroidal varieties, uh, excellent example of log smooth varieties. In fact, log smooth varieties are just toroidal ones. Uh, so it extends the known uh, no thing. In this case, the, the differentials, uh, shift of differentials are gener is generated by dt and uh, uh, delta m. And for delta m, we can choose any basis of uh, group associated to m. No need to take generators or whatever. Moreover, m can be complicated when no canonical generators exist. Uh, I call it monomial democracy. M does not have to be free anymore. There is no canonical choice of base for MGP, but we don't care. We work with all monomials on the equal ground. So M or M cube or whatever, we are all equal for our needs. And we'll, we'll see the difference. Uh, okay, toroidal morphisms are log smooth morphisms. Again, done discussed it, so probably I'll uh, just uh, skip. Uh, uh, one of examples of uh, such uh, log smooth morphism are semi stable maps. For example, spec C of XY to spec C of P. And uh, the relative differential is generated by, is locally free, generated by one element, is a delta X or delta Y, it doesn't matter, they are related by uh, just a rational factor. <clears throat> Another interesting example of uh, log smooth and even log et al maps are so called Coomer log et al covers. When you just uh, uh, take uh, few roots of monomials you have. Uh, for example, uh, orbifold, uh, cover of uh, orbifold by a smooth guy. It's even not flat, but it's uh, log et al, Coomer log et al. Okay. Uh, well, again, it's a bit repetition of what Dan said. So uh, maybe I'll just mention the remark. Uh, the most uh, surprising new feature of uh, logarithmic algorithm is that it's factorial with respect to Coomer log et al covers. For example, if you extract roots of monomial coordinates, then the algorithm is compatible with such a thing. It's complete nonsense. In the usual situation, I'll explain you why it's natural in uh, um, in logarithmic situation. Okay, so two main results of our paper from 17 on uh, log principalization on logarithmic variety. So first result says that given a toroidal variety, yeah. Uh, so toroidal variety, just another name for log smooth log variety. Given a toroidal variety, and an ideal. There exists a sequence of admissible blowing up of toroidal varieties. I'll explain what does it mean admissible blowing up in the next slide. <clears throat> Such that the pullback of ideal is monomial. So uh, on purpose, I formulate this theorem precisely as we formulated uh, principalization. And this sequence is compatible with log smooth mode. As in the classical situation, this implies resolution of general logarithmic varieties. Uh, why? Because locally you can embed them into log smooth and then principalize ideal and so on. The same reduction works. So uh, resolution of uh, log varieties is a corollary and it also possesses this strong logarithmic smooth contrariety. Okay. And now the method. Uh, well, see, like formulations, which are just logarithmic adjustments of what, what uh, uh, was earlier, and logarithmic in a sense means that 
we just use such a formulation that you can add the, the word logarithmic everywhere and you win, yeah? So sort of similar happens here. We just want to replace derivations by logarithmic derivations. So here are basic three things which were used in the uh, classical method. Logarithmic order of I is the minimal D such that this power of logarithmic chief of derivations uh, produces the uh, structure shift. Okay. So I replace D, D by D log and just use the same definition. And you'll see that practically it's on one hand, it's a similar thing. On the other hand, it's very different, but okay. On the level of formulation, it looks just the same. Maximal contact is any age given by vanishing of uh, uh, element T, where T is any regular coordinate in, uh, that is coordinate of log order one in uh, D log uh, D minus one of I X. So in particular, this H uh, is uh, automatically, uh, again, this should be, okay, this makes no sense. And this should be, and this should be log smooth. H is log smooth. Uh, and third, the coefficient ideal is defined again by precisely the same formula with logarithm. Okay. In addition, what are the modifications which we use? Uh, we use so-called ID admissible modifications. So first of all, J is chosen so that I is contained in J to the D. This is precisely the analog of condition that we only blow up the center, which lies in multiplicity D log. And second, our ideal is described by, is generated by a few regular coordinates. Yeah, if I go back, for example, here, regular coordinates are these ones and the monomial are any, any elements of monomial. And few monomials. And about these monomials, I don't care. Maybe there is M1 and uh, M1 times M2 and M2, M2 cube, whatever. Any set of monomials is fine for me. Uh, it turns out that if we blow up such a guy, the new X prime is automatically log smooth. Uh, it does not have to be, even if we start with smooth one, it does not have to be smooth at all, but it is log smooth. And the uh, transform is defined. And uh, I would like to stress that in fact, uh, our ideal is combined of two. It's T1, TL. It's an ideal of log smooth subscheme. And N1, MR defines some monomial ideal on this subscheme. Okay. And now uh, about the difference of two things. Yeah. Uh, this definition of log order, uh, it has one very striking and maybe unexpected at first. Uh, uh, look consequence. Uh, log order of any regular coordinate is one because the derivation dti takes ti to uh, uh, one. So it reduces the order. So the, uh, the order can be made uh, uh, zero by single derivation. But order of monomial cannot be made zero at all. Any derivation takes monomial to its uh, uh, multiple. Monomials are in fact, eigen uh, vectors of uh, uh, logarithmic derivation. So it behaves like zero. Its log order is infinite. This is the only thing uh, which makes everything consistent. Uh, so, and also this gives a, um, um, comprehensive explanation why monomials are dealt with very differently in logarithmic uh, approach. They, don't, they, they cannot be dealt with by, by, by derivation. 
and uh, because of this, it makes sense that our algorithm is compatible with extracting roots of monomials. Uh, if the order of monomial would be finite, you definitely change the order by extracting the root. And then no way to get compatibility with Kummer curves. Uh, okay, uh, what we have to pay for this luxus? Uh, we have to do something special when log order is infinite because log order is infinite means our invariant does not work. Uh, but this is very simple. Just make one simple cleaning first blow up. Uh, consider minimal monomial ideal, Imon. Yeah, it's not the Imon uh, which I described before. It doesn't have to be principal, invertible. Uh, just take a minimal monomial ideal containing I. For example, if I is uh, generated by sums MITI, then Imon is just uh, generated by all monomial coefficients. And the single monomial blow up along this center, this purely monomial center, makes log order finite. In fact, this is the result of uh, Collar. Collar asked how much we can improve singularity by toroidal by monomial blow up, and here is the answer. The improvement is that we make the log order finite. Uh, after that, the algorithm runs as usual, just the usual algorithm which we saw can go, but uh, it turns out much more efficient. It avoids both complications I talked about. Uh, it treats different coordinates separately. It has no problems with monomial coordinates contributing to something. Yeah, we dealt with once in the beginning uh, and once in the end, but uh, just separately. And uh, <clears throat> maximal contact is always given by a regular coordinate because we use logarithmic derivations to, to determine, to detect it, like the, the usual. We used the derivations which respect the log slash. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, as I said, we just separate uh, two types of uh, coordinates. And the invariant becomes much simpler. It becomes just iterative orders. The order of uh, i, the order of i on h, and the next the maximal order, and so on. Uh, well, now last issue. Again, Dan described it in his talk, so I'll just repeat what he did. Uh, now, uh, what is the non-elementary thing here? Uh, it turns out that the algorithm, it does not distinguish monomials. It has no notion of irreducible or reducible, whatever. It does not know if monomial is a power or monomial does not exist. It can happen that the algorithm wants to blow up M to one over D because of these uh, weighted issues. And it does not know that M to one over D does not exist in our variety. Uh, so because of this, one has to use Kummer monomials, monomials which do not exist in our variety. They exist Kummer locally. So in logarithmic geometry, it tells locally, Kummer locally, they, 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 they exist. So what we do, we can pass to a log et al Kummer cover where these monomials exist, blow up there and go back by division by Galois group. The problem is that when we divide back, we can get something which is not log smooth. So we must divide in a stack theoretic way to stay in the category of log smooth uh, ambient variety. Uh, and um, this is the reason why non representable modifications, which we call Kummer blow ups or weighted blow ups, show up. So here is one example. Uh, if we take uh, stack TM with M given the log structure, we consider ideal T square minus M square. Yeah, just what uh, Dan showed in his. Uh, geometric picture and I show these ideals. When log order is two because of T square and uh, maximal contact is uh, vanish locus of T and uh, you can compute everything and uh, um, just blow up T to the, this is the output. Of it. But if they try to blow up T square minus M, then actually the log order is still two. Please pay attention, log order of M is infinite. So log order is two. Completely the same computation shows up uh, and uh, requests to blow up M to one half. And this produces a non representable Kummer blow up. This is precisely the example shown in uh, Dan's talk. And more generally, uh, weighted uh, blow up of T1 to TR with different weights. Yeah, in uh, this case, uh, 
uh, yeah, I did not write it in the slides, but in in the logarithmic uh, algorithm, we only uses use weights one 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 at all t's and d d d at all m's. But in general, uh, it's natural to ask if weighted blow ups with uh, different weights d one to d r uh, can be used to resolve singularities, and this is the guy which allowed us to. Uh, to develop DRIV algorithm in ATW19. And also McQuillan uh, discovered the same algorithm independently, uh, actually the same algorithm with weighted uh, blocks uh, uh, also in 19. Uh, so I expect that these weighted blowups in stack theoretic way, non-representable should, should be very useful for other classical problems in variational geometry. So not only here, but in many, many more applications uh, well thanks uh, thank you for your attention okay so uh, thank you very much uh, for, for a very nice talk you'd like to <laughs> turn on your microphone or whatever uh, okay so feel free to, to turn your things back on everybody um, so does anybody have any questions I could start with a question which is uh, this uh, from your description the algorithm looks extremely simple in some way. Does that give some Im improvement for computer algebra programs? Or it potentially, or yes. I think you should ask Dan if Dan is. Uh, I'm here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, because, because Dan really is involved uh, in this, uh, I think, uh, seriously. Yeah, so I, I got an undergrad to implement it uh, in Singular. And the Singular people, I mean, they're. I mean, it was uh, co-advised by a serious singular person, uh, Anna Rubis Kruger, and uh, we expect it to be um, included in the, uh, you know, the the usual distribution of singular. But uh, it 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 only reaches, um, so it it does not yet include the destackification stage. So, yeah, maybe one thing which I should say, uh, one should not have too much hope still because first of all it's lexicographic lexicographic means that you are always in trouble and second uh the when you restrict to maximal contact the it jumps to defactorial each time these are no. two things which are sort of built in it seems they cannot be improved even in weighted even in weighted which is most efficient they're not improved but uh, still the improvement here is that uh, instead of two n loops, we have only n loops. So in small dimensions, it can be feasible. Yeah. So but, we uh, dimension uh, ten or whatever it, in general. Oh it, no. Uh, yeah. So uh, up to well, we've did some things in dimension up to two or three. No, actually, dimension three, and some very small things in dimension four. Degree up to three of four with dimension with this dimension where maybe degree five in lower dimension yeah you have to be really careful because taking factorial grows very fast and we haven't yet figured out how to um truly avoid the factorials okay well i have another question which is the 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 log smooth morphisms do you have a log kind of a log duram complex Relative dram complex, which would be like locally yeah, free yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 it should be. It's, yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah. we, 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 we never used it. But yeah, read Kato Usui. Uh -uh. Yeah, so it it behaves. It encodes what you know about about the log uh, log um, growth of uh, of uh, hot structures at at the boundary. It's it it's the right. I mean, Kato shows that this is the right language uh -huh. talk about the generating host structures and and the stacky base thing that that doesn't change that at all it's it's fine yeah okay. it's it's functorial therefore it descends to stacks mm -hmm. okay well okay now uh, now i'm kind of out of questions so if anybody else has questions please <laughs> okay well so if there aren't any further questions so uh let's wrap this up so let's thank uh, michael again for a nice talk uh And I guess we'll reconvene uh, at uh, what time is it? At ten thirty Miami time.